Hey everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're doing an overview, a 30,000 foot overview of photosynthesis and cellular respiration, the two main chemical processes that occur in living things that cycle um, between each other in order for cellular energetics to even occur, for life to turn energy from light into, well, food. Food that you eat and food that you use for energy. Um, this is a huge topic, a huge set of topics in Unit 3, Cellular Energetics, in the AP Bio curriculum, so 3.5 and 3.6. Um, and I just wanted to give a overview of what this is all about here because um, once you get into the really the deep weeds about the um, specific processes that happen during the light reactions and the dark reactions in photosynthesis and um, when we're talking about glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, aka oxidative phosphorylation, in cellular respiration, it's hard to keep a lot of things straight. So I wanted to take a second and take a step back and look at the overview of both of these processes here. Okay, so as you can see on the screen in front of me, I have the overall general uh, equation for photosynthesis. And keep in mind that photosynthesis is a series of lots of different reactions, but if we boil it down, this is what we get, and we can put it in a chemical equation here. And this is not balanced, by the way. I didn't balance the equation. This is, again, this is taking a step back a, a bit, so we don't have to worry about balancing. Okay, but what plants do is they take in carbon dioxide through little things on this, uh, the underside of their leaves called the stomata that open and close. They take in carbon dioxide, and they use water and sunlight in order to convert that energy from sunlight into and store it into glucose molecules, so that's our first product, and they also produce oxygen gas as a byproduct, oxygen gas that, well, other things need to breathe, and that's necessary for aerobic respiration, as we'll see in a little bit. Okay, so if we're, uh, if we're, this is the very, very basic way of describing photosynthesis, um, but we can describe photosynthesis in addition into two steps, and those are the light reactions that occur in the thylakoid of the, uh, of the chloroplast, and the Calvin cycle, which occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. And as the name suggests here, part one of photosynthesis are the light reactions, and they need light, as I just highlighted here, um, in order to occur. And essentially what happens during the light reactions is that the thylakoid membrane on the chloroplast, there's two structures called photosystems on there. And what they're able to do and with light is they're able to absorb certain frequencies of light thanks to a molecule called chlorophyll. It's, you know, it's green. That's what makes plants green. Um, and it's able to absorb that light and use it for a couple things, to excite an electron, to um, start an electron transport chain, to produce these two products here, ATP, okay, a little bit of ATP, not a lot, a little bit of ATP, and another electron carrying molecule called NADPH. These are two energy rich molecules that light energy is stored in for a little bit. Um, and where does it get that electron from that it passes from one thing to the next in order to make these molecules? It gets it from splitting a water molecule into hydrogen ions, electrons, and oxygen gas. And again, this is not a balanced equation here. It's not balanced, but I'm just trying to show you the show you the general process of what happens. Okay, so the chlorophyll and the photosystem literally split light, water, uh, use light to split water into electrons, protons, and then it produces oxygen gas as a byproduct. Okay, so it doesn't really need this oxygen gas um, for the rest of photosynthesis here, but it's going to come back in a big way here in a minute. Oxygen will, I mean. Okay, so these are two energy-rich molecules that are used in what's called the Calvin cycle, or AKA the dark reactions, because they don't require light in order to occur. And uh, what happens during the Calvin cycle is that um, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere that is absorbed by the plant is fixed using a variety of enzymes that are in the stroma, I should have labeled that here, the stroma of the chloroplast. And it takes these carbon dioxides and fixes them together. It means it kind of keeps them steady, um, and it assembles them into a glucose molecule, C6H12O6. So it's kind of like taking six of these carbon dioxide atoms and putting them in a ring in order to make glucose, and this is a very important molecule. Uh, glucose can be used for a lot of things, particularly it can be used for cellular respiration in order to make a boatload of energy in the form of ATP. Okay, so we're turning light into glucose here. That's the gist of photosynthesis. We're producing oxygen as a byproduct here. All right, so here's your Calvin cycle and here's your light reactions. That's photosynthesis. Now phase two here is cellular respiration. 
Okay. Now, take a look at uh, this overall equation. Again, cellular respiration is a boatload. It's a huge metabolic pathway. There's lots of steps to it. But if we boil it down to as simple as we can get, what do we get out of it? Um, well, we take in glucose, okay, which is, again, a carbohydrate. It's what you get from your food. And you use oxygen, what you breathe, in order to make a lot of ATP, as I just highlighted here. And you make two byproducts as a result of these reactions, too carbon dioxide, which is coincidentally what you breathe out, and you make a little bit of water as a byproduct as well. Okay, But the main goal here is making ATP. And remember, so in the photosynthesis, we uh, used light in order to make this glucose, and now we're using glucose to make ATP, which is the main cellular energy. This is the form of energy that cells actually use. Okay. Um, so there's the overall equation, and here's the overall process. Now, this is, might be a little more complicated than, uh, than the light reactions, but um, here's, what's, here's what's up here. We can break cellular respiration down into three separate steps, and those are glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. All right, so now we're in a different part of the cell here. We were in the chloroplast before, but now we're dealing with the mitochondria, hence why I kind of color-coded um, the chloroplast being green and the mitochondria being red. Okay, so uh, where do we start with this whole thing? Well, stage one of uh, cellular respiration is called glycolysis. Glycolysis literally means breaking sugar. Um, and what do we start with? Well, we start with glucose, which is coincidentally, well, maybe not coincidentally, that's what we ended photosynthesis with. It was with glucose. Okay, so the mitochondrion, well, it's not, we're not in the mitochondrion yet. What the cell is able to do is able to take in glucose and break it down through a series of reactions and turn that molecule into something called pyruvate. Okay, so glycolysis is basically turning glucose into pyruvate. And uh, we make some other products along the way here. We make a few ATP molecules. We make two ATP molecules. And we also make two what are called NADH molecules, which again are energy-rich molecules. They're just glorified electron carriers are are what's known as reducing agents. They carry an electron from one part of the cell to the next. Okay, um, so the process of converting glucose into pyruvate doesn't require any oxygen. Oxygen doesn't come in and play a role until we find the electron transport chain over here. Okay, so making ATP without oxygen, so turning glucose into pyruvate and just making ATP with that, that's called anaerobic respiration. We don't need oxygen over here. That's why I put a line in between these two sections here. Not only because as this side in the cytosol, which is just, you know, the fluid within a cell, and this side is in the mitochondrion, but also because this is the part of the whole process that does not require oxygen. Okay, so if you don't have enough oxygen for your mitochondrion, you're really going to stop here and you're only going to make two ATP. But if you do have oxygen, it's like a go-ahead to start the, the next two phases of cellular respiration here, which is the aerobic processes. So first of all, in order to enter the mitochondrion, because that's where these other two processes occur, pyruvate needs to get converted into a molecule called acetyl-CoA. Co meaning like coenzyme. Okay, so acetyl-CoA-enzyme A is then shuffled. It's, the coenzyme allows it to enter the mitochondrion and start the Krebs cycle. And the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria, so the very, very inside. So if you recall from a previous unit, the mitochondrion has two membranes. It has a smooth outer membrane and a very folded inner membrane with mitochondrial, what are called Christi, or Christi, um, that make it, it looks like squiggles on the inside of the mitochondria. And it has a lot of surface area um, because it's so folded. And uh, on the very inside of that membrane, that's where the Krebs cycle occurs. Now, do you have to memorize the Krebs cycle? Absolutely not. Okay, but what you do need to know is that acetyl-CoA goes into the Krebs cycle, and what comes out are two, once again, energy-rich electron-carrying molecules called NADH and FADH2. More NADH than what we had over here, and we have another electron-carrying molecule called FADH2. Okay. Additionally, what the Krebs cycle produces, it also makes the carbon dioxide that you breathe out. Okay, so that's a byproduct of the Krebs cycle is carbon dioxide. It takes this acetyl-CoA and it makes these two energy-rich molecules, but it also produces this waste product, carbon dioxide. And it produces a little ATP along the way as well. Okay, but where it gets really, where we get a lot of energy from, okay, is from phase three here of cellular respiration, which is the electron transport chain, also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, and what happens here um, I have a diagram that my own AP Bio class looked at here, but again, we're taking our 30,000-foot view here. 
um, what the ele happens in the electron transport chain, which is along the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, um, these two molecules, NADH and FADH2, they drop off an electron, and hence why it's called the electron transport chain. That electron gets passed from protein to protein to protein to protein to protein to protein to protein, to protein along the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, and that makes what's called a proton gradient. You put more protons on one side of the membrane and less on the other. What are the protons going to do? Well, they're going to diffuse to where there's fewer protons. There's fewer hydrogen ions, okay? And that diffusion of protons, aka hydrogen ions, is what powers ATP synthase. And ATP synthase, once it gets going, it works on what's called a proton motive force. It spins like a motor. What it's able to do is catalyze the reaction of turning ADP, adenosine diphosphate, which means there's two phosphates, and add a third phosphate to it to make it ATP. And ATP is our main energy molecule. That's what we're going for, as I highlighted down here. Um, and through the electron transport chain, we can make up to 30 or more ATP molecules per one glucose that we started from in the beginning. Okay, so from glucose, we can make enough NADH and FADH2 in the Krebs cycle in order to power ATP synthase for long enough to produce 30 plus ATP molecules. Okay? Imagine that if we stopped without oxygen, we would only have two ATP molecules. So you can make many times more ATP with aerobic respiration than you can with anaerobic respiration. Okay? So the, at the very end of the electron transport chain, well, that electron has been transported from protein to protein to protein to protein in order to make that pro proton gradient, the hydrogen ion gradient, in order to power ATP synthase. Right? Um, but that electron that's been passed down has to end up somewhere. It can't just be floating around in the mitochondria. Okay, so what happens here is oxygen, good old oxygen that you breathe in, um, is what we call the terminal electron acceptor, meaning that oxygen takes in that electron, and then what it's able to do is become water um, when it binds with those electrons and some protons within the mitochondrial matrix. Um, it forms a water molecule, which is kind of like a byproduct, a waste product of the electron transport chain. But this is really what we're going for over here are these 30 plus ATP molecules. Okay, so if we take a look back at our two equations, uh, there should be something that you notice. Well, if we, in photosynthesis, we take in carbon dioxide and water um, and we produce glucose and oxygen, take a look. Glucose and oxygen are what are used to start cellular respiration. Um, and what's used at the end of cellular respiration, carbon dioxide and water, is used to start photosynthesis. So this whole thing cycles over and over again. Hey, and you can see what I highlighted here. What's amazing about this whole process is us turning, or living things, turning energy from light that was previously inaccessible, um, or inaccessible before photosynthesis evolved, turning light energy into cellular energy through this whole process here. That's what I'm really trying to show you here. All right, so as we can see, we can start over here with light, and this energy goes a long way in order to get converted into ATP. All right, so hopefully this helped you just a little bit um, grasp the overall processes of cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Drop in a comment or something like that, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Good luck on your test.